Hello, lovely ladies, and welcome to Zion's Company of Women podcast. I'm Lana. And I'm Courtney. And it's wonderful to have you with us today. Hello, Courtney, my friend. How are you? Hello, Lana. I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, I am. I am doing well. I am doing well. I don't know what to update you on today. What can I update you on? Mm, um, it's raining. <laughs> well, we usually, yeah, we usually start with the yeah. weather. So I was going to ask how that's going because a really good, nice rainstorm sounds really good right now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's raining and I just, I love the rain. I, I love the sound of the rain on our, our roof and I love thunderstorms and just, I don't know, there's something about just sitting watching the rain that just again I talk a lot about what hugs my heart well having a cup of coffee and looking out the window while it's raining hugs my heart (laughs) Uh, the soul that is for sure it does it does Um, but I want to say my friend I'm loving that beautiful greenery behind you (gasps) that beautiful plant and and those beautiful cushions I'm emotionally attached to my plants. So this guy right back here, that one, it's just a recent purchase and uh, that's a prayer plant. Um, And I saw it in the store and I just grabbed it. I was like, this is coming home with me. (laughs) The Lord speaks, speak Lord, your servant is listening. I must buy this plant. So I just, that's what I tell my husband when I bring them home. I'm like one of those people that adopts too many animals, you know, but it's just plants. I think it's holy in some way. Yeah. It, oh, look, my friend, I am going to admit to you that I have been on holidays twice uh, and uh, at, at different times and I have taken my peace lily with me because I couldn't deal with the fact that I would be gone for weeks and it wouldn't have, any, I know they can go quite a while without water, but I just, I had to bring it with me. Like it's no. like another child. Like yeah, <laughs> I had to yeah this one water. I'm emotionally yeah. invested in this plant and its well-being. Right. So it, it's fine with me that it comes home with you. I've been known to buckle mine in in the car uh, for the drive home. So you know, I think that that was what when we had the tornado move through in February of 23. Um, my trees were my trees are just, I love my trees. I love my trees and my, and my property. And that was one of the things that was damaged the most. And I think that, like, I remember telling you, I went out there the next morning and Mm -hmm. it was first morning light. I wanted to be the, I wanted to see it and I wanted to see it alone Mm -hmm. so I could fully process. And I remember just standing out, like I didn't cry I saw the house was all ripped up and stuff and I didn't mm. cry until I got out in the middle of the, the field, the middle of the yard, like mm. in the middle of yeah. all of the, the trees and things that had been broken down. And I, I think that that was really the first time that I've ever truly felt like creation mm. groaning, yeah. you know, like the Bible mm. talks about. And I remember it was such a deep, deep felt moment for me to just allow myself Mm. to sit there and Mm. feel it and know that and and we're going to talk a little bit about this today too about land and territories and things Mm. um but just to feel that space um and I know that might sound too woo woo for some people and that's fine but I'm telling you it was tangible it was tangible Mm. going out there and there were times where I go out there and I sit And I look at the big holes and I just kind of remember like, you know, thank you, Lord, for uh, protecting us Uh, because seeing trees that were, you know, like 50, 60, 70 years old, just knocked over and then to know that that came at us and and just Mm. to to feel the Lord's protection over our family Um, and Mm. to really have that knowing that you know, that creation space kind of laid itself down, which was how it felt for me that it laid itself down for us to feel that groaning for the sons and daughters to manifest themselves was a real tangible moment for me. So yes, I say that like in all earnestness, I really mean like to have an emotional attachment to some of my plants as hard as mine. <laughs> yeah. Is mine. Wow. Yeah. It's a very real place. It really is. Oh. Wow. 
Well, my friend, I am I am with you in the the emotional yeah. <laughs> connection mm-hmm. to uh, to plants and uh, oh, when I I'm not a green thumb, I'm believing to be a green thumb. But I tell mm-hmm. you what, when I've come home with some beautiful little pretty flower pots. And then I've either overwatered them or put them in the sun when they're meant to not be in the sun and gone out the next day and they're all dried up and dead. Or oh, I just have to tell you this, like, and then we will, ladies, we will dive into <laughs> our episode today. But when I lived in South Australia, I bought the most beautiful plant and I, I don't know what the actual name was, but another name for it was fire flowers and they looked like like fire and they were so beautiful. I loved this thing, Courtney. I would talk to it. I would speak life over it. I would water it and it was blossoming. And then one morning I came out and a bird or something had gotten to the plant and completely severed the flower, the beautiful flower mm-hmm. out of the middle of the this plant. And I tell you what, I was devastated, like <laughs> devastated in, in like, yeah, huge way. Yeah. So I, yeah. I am so yeah. with you, um, yeah. yeah, in you that space. It. Anyway, and then anyway, one more story before we just we're going <laughs> to go it. on. We're, let's just go with this. We'll just get into it from here because we're going to talk about uh, we're going to pick up and continue talking about uh, Jacob um, and yeah. his beautiful ladder dream that he has. But um, in that experience where we had the tornado on it, it was interesting mm-hmm. because um, a couple nights later I was I had a dream of it. Mm-hmm. And, and some people say, you know, that's your brain processing it. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had a dream that it was, it was something, I, it wasn't in the form of a tornado. It was in the form of, um, just this awful thing that was headed towards the house. And mm-hmm. I remember, um, in the dream, putting my hands on the door and all I could say was Jesus, like help, help. Mm-hmm. Like that was all I could say. And then I woke up and I went back into the dream, like you and I talk about, which is appropriate for us kind of diving into this, this, uh, narrative mm-hmm. here about Jacob and his dream. I went back into the dream and I asked the Lord, I was like, Lord, what do I need to do? You know, what, what do I need to do here? Sh- you're showing me this. So what do you want me to do? And he said, mm-hmm. Courtney, it's already been done. And I was like, okay. And I said, well, where are you? And mm-hmm. I immediately, I saw him standing right outside of the window, which was outside of where we had taken shelter in our house. Like it would have been mm-hmm. just outside of the walls of where we were sheltering. Uh, and I walked out there because I thought, okay, I'm just going to be present in in the space and I'm going to discern what's going on so I walk out there and I turn and I look and we have this little magnolia tree Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a tulip tree is is kind of the offhand name for it and I glance over and there's one purple bud on this thing and we had just like we had just had a high-end EF2 Mm -hmm. tornado blow through days before and I didn't see it until it I don't think it was really there until uh, that day uh, that mm. I had the dream that that following that same day, and I went out there and I saw this beautiful bright purple bud that was blossoming right wow. where I had seen Jesus standing, and I just thought like all of that, you know me. again that creation connection of just the Lord mm-hmm. saying like I'm here I'm here and I'm in yeah. this space I'm in this place and how beautiful mm-hmm. like it was so encouraging to me. Ah. Oh. And isn't that just like the Lord, like in the midst of something that was so terrible and, you know, and and so awful that the Lord is like, hey, like I'm here and I was here. And just then that tangible manifestation, like you can't make that up. Like that's beautiful. Um, Oh, love it. Yeah, it was so good. It was so good. So with that, let's get into our, our continued series on Jacob. We've been yeah. in Genesis 28, chapter 10, or excuse me, Genesis 28, verse 10 is where we started. And we read through it last time, Mona. We just yeah. wanted to read through it for those of you that don't have the Passion Translation version of Genesis. If you don't have it, get it. It's amazing. Um, mm. But we've gone through, just to kind of catch you up, uh, Jacob's left Beersheba. He's camping. He's in such a low place that he's used a stone for his pillow. Um, Mm -hmm. and he lays down to sleep and he has a dream. 
And in the dream, he sees a stairway that's securely fixed on the earth and it's reaching into heaven. And in his dream, these messengers of God were ascending and descending Mm -hmm. on the stairway. And uh, Yahweh is standing beside him. And he says to Jacob, I am Yahweh, the God of your father, Abraham, and the God Mm -hmm. of Isaac. You are lying on the very ground that I will give to you and your descendants. Mm. Uh, so I want to just stop us there mm. uh, because I, there were a couple things that I felt when I had read this initially, the Lord had pointed out to focus on. And this is one of them. He, he asked me to pay shares with Jacob um, mm-hmm. in his dream. And this is the second thing that he tells him is that Uh, you're lying. He tells him basically where he is. Like you're lying on the very ground that I will give to you and your descendants. So let's start there, Lana. What does that speak? What comes to your mind in in that? Mm. Yeah. Well, straight away, like as I look at that scripture, so you are lying on the very ground that I will give to you and to your descendants. Um, Straight away, it speaks to me about occupying it speaks to me about the place of um of territory it speaks to me about um, also inheritance like as you were reading it just then I was like oh there's something in this around inheritance as well um and I, I, I'm trying not to jump into the verses going forward so but I just yeah. I really <laughs> feel like I just, I really feel like, especially looking at this particular scripture and this story right now for this year, I think Courtney is so, um, uh, is so important. Oh, I have someone coming into my office. So ladies, if you can hear uh, someone running in the background, it's uh, one of my children. So, (laughs) um, bless bless children. (laughs) Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just think it's it's really key for um, for this year that I believe that 2024 is really a year of coming up higher. It's a year of ascension. And so here you have this story of there's many themes, but there's ascension, but there's also this um, this like word of the Lord where he's like, this is where you are lying. So you're lying on the ground that I will give to you. And Courtney, as I look at this, I I keep seeing this, this place of kind of ascension so tied closely to the place of occupying and territory and recognizing what is the territory that God has given me that he has like assigned to me that is uh, my inheritance and it's actually like it's not just mine it's the it's for the generations it's for the descendants and it's like does that make sense like I just I keep Mm -hmm. seeing the ascension and this occupying hand in hand together um, being really key right now and especially where the Lord is saying like this is where you are like this is where you are and this is what I have for you this is the land I'm going to give you there's a real partnership that I'm seeing between um, yeah that that ascending and that occupying that then extends out to the like it's it's the yeah. descendants right that go and extend out into the whole world um yeah. So yeah, they're my initial kind of yeah. stir as I look at that scripture. Uh, but what about yeah. you? Well, I think I love that you talked about the generational part of it because I see, you know, what Abraham did. It's mm. not like it's not like uh, Jacob was aware. Oh, I'm mm. headed to this place, and this is where I'm going. Yet, yeah. what Abraham did through his relationship, through having a relationship with the Lord what that opened up for his descendants. Mm. Yeah. Like just opened Mm -hmm. up a space. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's something that the Lord talks to me a lot about opening up spaces, Mm -hmm. occupying spaces, even, even just with your presence alone, because if you carry him within you, you're carrying him into the room, wherever you go or whatever space you go to. So we're kind of like mobile territories in, in many Mm -hmm. ways, but Mm-hmm. I love that picture of that, that ascending, that Abraham's relationship created yeah. that place of ascension that was open. 
Mm. to Jacob that was then revealed to Jacob Mm -hmm. um, as God's faithfulness to Abraham. That was God's promise to Abraham. So God's fulfilling it. And that was, I think, Mm. one of the things that I noticed when I started reading this, especially these first few lines. I'm like, you know, the Lord's not really asking Jacob to do anything. It's not like he shows up and Mm. he says, hey, I'm God, bow down and worship me, which he had every right to do. Yeah, Uh, he is the great I am. But he shows up instead and says, hey, I'm I'm Yahweh, because it's likely and I read this in my footnotes of one of my other Bibles that this was probably uh, one of the first times or the first time that Mm. Jacob had heard the Lord's voice. Mm. So how kind is it that he identifies himself? Like, I just see such kindness and faithfulness to who he is Mm -hmm. and the promises that he's made to Abraham that he's now fulfilling into his descendants. And I think that that's such an encouragement to so many people, um, especially mothers in this time, your relationship Mm -hmm. with the Lord matters. Yeah, It's eternal, it's uh, living, and it does carry down to your descendants. It makes a difference. It impacts, even if you might not see it or you might not be aware of it, um, it does, it's there. Mm -hmm. So that, that was what stood out to me in that. And I thought, especially, you know, I've been talking about this being the year of Ascension. There's -hmm. something about that as well, that as we ascend with the Lord, as we commune with him, Mm -hmm. we're going up and down and he's saying, Mm -hmm. yes, and I'm taking you out. So there's something about that as well. Yeah, I love that. And I I love um, that you touched on, um, you said, especially mothers, because I really felt that as well. Like while I was uh, looking at this, that, you know, that place of, you know, you hear that line um, that people say, oh, you know, your children are watching, your children are watching you, you know, whether that makes you feel great or not, (laughs) you know, like those moments, like you're always watching. Depends on the day. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But like I am so aware of this, um, especially even as we talk about this and we look at this scripture, because what you said, Courtney, about um, don't underestimate like your your place, like your space of intimacy with the Lord and what that's opening up for your children. Like I really feel like even especially in this year that we're in, that the Lord is really wanting to encourage um, mothers as well, that in the space of um, at home, you know, and as you're cultivating that place of intimacy with the Lord, like that's opening up a realm in your home, right? Like you are, um, you know, I love in Proverbs, oh, I haven't got it in front of me, Proverbs 31, but it says about, um, and she watches over um, the ways of her home or different translations and, um And that word watchman has really been on my heart for this year as well. And I think that for mothers, like there is just such an encouragement here that like as you are digging deep into your relationship with the Lord, like don't underestimate, like you said, Courtney, like that the impact of even the seeds that are being sown into your children's lives. And I remember the Lord saying to me a number of years ago, um, you know, Lana, as you um, dive deep into intimacy with me, like your children are going to go even further than you will ever go. And, and that like really blessed my heart so many years ago because it made me um, realize the beautiful privilege that I have as a mother to, as I cultivate this space of intimacy with the Lord, like I am building this, this history with God and this um, heritage of the Lord that my children feast on and then they go even further than I have been. And so like even now I think, wow, some of the things that I hear my children say that comes out of their mouth that they get at like seven, oh, sorry, like Judah would get upset if he heard I called him seven years old, (laughs) ten years old and like, yeah, right, and five Mm -hmm. years old. I go, wow, like I didn't know that when I, I didn't have that revelation when I was your age. Mm -hmm. And so I just think there's something really significant in what you just shared, Courtney, um, for mothers, because your history with God and your place of encounter is a well 
right? That's a well that you have entered into with the Lord and that well then spills out and overflows into your home and 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 really brings like your children into this place of encounter. And so I just, I love this because I look at this and I go, wow, like the, the price that was paid, the encounters that were had of those that went before me, like I actually... I I actually reap from that. Like I actually get to walk in um, some of that incredible inheritance and encounter. Mm -hmm. So I love that. The the emphasis on generations in this and descendants, I think, is really important, especially for where we are right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I think, you know, you and I were talking this week a lot about mothers. Um just there being a strategic, I don't know what word would be appropriate to say there, but there's been a lot of things that have kind of been leveled at mothers right now. Yes. Uh, and I think yeah. that that's partially because of the importance of um, mm-hmm. uh, just their place in their children's lives. And mm-hmm. again, holding that influence into the generations that are coming from you. Um mm-hmm. And so I, yeah, I really felt the strong encouragement on that too, Mona, of just speaking mm-hmm. that into, into those that are listening. Um, like, like Lana said, and like I said, like your, your relationship with the Lord, it flourishes, it, it goes out whether you see it or not. Um, mm-hmm. And really, like I've taken a lot of, of rest in God being faithful to his promise to Abraham. Like when we're yeah. in Christ, we're, in, we're Abraham's seed. And so he's, mm-hmm. his blessing is, is his faithfulness that he, he's mm-hmm. promised he will do it. So there's mm-hmm. some rest that comes in that as well, that I find really beautiful in this, that um, the mm-hmm. Lord is appearing to Isaac and like, mm-hmm. let's look at Isaac's track or not, excuse me, not Isaac. Let's look at Jacob's track record up until this point. Yeah. Not so hot. Like we've done yeah. some stuff here. <laughs> like, not too good. <laughs> yeah. Um, if we're being really honest, not, not the worst, but not great either. Um, yeah. But he was in that place. It's not as though he came to the Lord and and got clean, as we might like to say, and then mm-hmm. the Lord comes to bless him. No, he's just in the middle of it, out in mm-hmm. a field somewhere with a, a pillow uh, as a, a pillar, or excuse me, a stone as a pillow. Mm-hmm. And here the Lord is is coming to to him and saying, um, not not starting off saying, "Hey, worship me right away." He's saying, "This is who I am." Um, yeah. I'm the God of your father, Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and your line on the very ground that I will give to your descendants. Mm-hmm. And so he basically just comes to him with promises, like right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Um, and that to me speaks just of that kindness, like even of a mother's heart. We don't require yeah. of our children the moment they're born, do we? Yeah. That they go no. and worship us or do it. No, we mm-hmm. just want to love them. We just want to mm-hmm. hold them and nourish them and teach them. Um, mm-hmm. And that to me is a real father's heart here that, that you see, yeah. even in this simple interaction. Yeah. Oh, I love this, Courtney. And I, I'm going to share this. I know it's a little bit <clears throat> um, out of left field, I guess, a little bit. And I wasn't mm-hmm. planning on sharing this. But when you were talking just then, Courtney, and you were sharing about um, the rest uh, that is found in the promises of God and like the fulfillment of promises and the faithfulness of the Lord. And then you um, you touched on how there has been um, quite a significant, I agree with you, uh, attack against mothers right now. And as you were talking, when you said the word rest, immediately I went back to a dream that I had um, recently and I felt like the Lord said, I want you to share it. And it was a very quick dream. Um, But in the dream, I remember that I was standing in line uh, facing a door and I was ready uh, and waiting to be enlisted uh, for battle. I was waiting to be called onto the battlefield to go to war. And uh, and as I'm waiting there, all of a sudden somebody uh, stands in front of me. But in the dream, um, I couldn't see anyone. I just knew somebody was there. And so I think that it was an angel or it could have been the Lord, but it was it was very strong that whoever it was, this was a heavenly being. And they grabbed me by the shoulders and turned me around like 
to the right and turned me right around so my back was against the door that I was thinking I was about to go through to be enlisted and I then was drawn into this new room. And when I walked into this new room, it was a bridal chamber. And when I entered into this room, Courtney, the rest in the faithfulness of God and the wonder of his nature was on a level that I had not felt at that, like that intensity before. And I remember as I was waking up that the Lord started speaking to me about how when we can go through seasons of intense battle and or just intense stuff, that we can kind of be living in this place where we are um, ready to be enlisted again. Like I'm just waiting for the next battle or I'm waiting for the next thing that's coming and I'm I'm ready to to go again, which look, it's it's wonderful to be to be ready and to not be ignorant of, you know, all the stuff that the enemy tries to throw at us and all that. But there was something in this dream, Courtney, where the Lord was wooing his his people into this place of rest again in the wonder of who he is and his faithfulness. It was, hey, like, and I know that in this passage, we're not talking about battle. We're not talking about, um, that's not the context of this passage. But as you were speaking, Courtney, I felt so strongly that, um, that there could be those that are listening, that when you shared that about the rest and the encouragement in the fulfillment, God fulfilling his promise, Um, in this passage, that dream came back to me that there is this place Mm -hmm. where the Lord is wanting to bring you deeper into a place of rest and wonder that he is the God that fulfills his promises, not only to you, but I'm feeling really heavily that there are some of you that are listening uh, that you, you could be mothers or grandmothers, but you're really concerned about some of your children or grandchildren, or spiritual children, and that the Lord is wanting to encourage you that he will. There was such an emphasis as I heard it, I will fulfill the promise that I have spoken over the Mm -hmm. children and over the generations, that the Lord is wanting to release hope this morning, even through this one little scripture, you know, you're lying on the very ground that I will give to you and your descendants. But I feel like the Father's heart of encouragement to remind you again of his faithfulness to you and to your descendants and also that he's bringing you into that place of rest and wonder again in that place of intimacy, that bridal chamber where you are refreshed and you are, um, you are strengthened again in that place of seeing his faithfulness yeah. and his nature. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah, man. I can feel the fire on that one. And I feel Mm. too, I guess maybe we just need to have a little bit of ministry time here in the middle of this. Um, Mm. I have really felt that particularly this last year, there was a lot of chaos that came at families. There was a lot of separation and a lot of chaos and had very Mm. much felt the Lord pointing back to that and saying, like what started with chaos is going to end in shalom. It's going to end in peace. And that word shalom actually means, and this has been so heavy. I feel like the Lord's been repeating this over and over again, that shalom is um, breaks the authority that binds to chaos. (laughs) Yes. So the shalom of God, the presence of God, that, that Jesus that is within you, that is the authority. He gives you his peace. So he's given you his authority to break the authority which would bind certain things in or family in, in your children, whatever that would bind to chaos. And you have the authority as mothers mm-hmm. and as um, sons and daughters of the living God to speak to that chaos, to command it gone and to also mm-hmm. release the shalom, to release the order and the peace of the Lord. Doesn't mean that it's not going to be messy, but there is a mm-hmm. peaceful messiness where where ingredients are being added there's a difference between ingredients coming together I'm just thinking of a recipe there's a difference between ingredients coming together and and coming together where it may not look like the finished product just yet um Mm -hmm. but there's peace in the mixing and there's peace in the making of things um it's not chaos 
It's mm -hmm. simply things being added together. And I think that many of you as mothers, you know when there's chaos that's being stirred up um, with your children, you know what's going on. You, many of you feel it in your, in your gut or your bones or however you wanna say that before anyone ever sees it with, with their eyes, you know, you have a, a pulse of what's going on with your children and even in your own personal life that you have, mm -hmm. I feel like the Lord is just reminding so many of you to speak shalom break yeah. that thing that would try to bind to chaos and release, release the peace, release the order, release the order of the Lord that would bring things into alignment as they need to be. Um, I just really felt that, that really strongly, uh, Lana. Yeah. Yes. I, Courtney, I, my goodness me this week, I was, uh, I jumped online to, to do something and, as I uh, went to reply to a message, I think it was um, in my email or something, um, I had Facebook open on another screen and I saw it flicker. So I clicked it and it um, the page refreshed. And you know how Facebook reminds you of things? You get like Facebook yeah. memories. And it brought yeah. up this prophetic word from 2016. And I went to like close it and the Lord said, no, I want you to read it. And, uh, and so I began to read this word from 2016 and, um, and it was all about homes. And there's this one particular um, part that as you were talking just then, I was like, oh my gosh, you can't make this up. So I'm going to read you this little blurb out of this word from 2016. That, and it's titled at uh, this subheading says spirit of chaos. It says this, in August of this year, the Lord showed me a demonic spirit of chaos that has been coming against God's people to really wreak havoc upon them and their household. And then I'd written a definition of chaos from the Google dictionary. Anyway, yeah. you guys know what chaos means. But anyway, then I go on to say, I saw this demonic spirit rearing its ugly head again, and it is attempting to wreak havoc in families and households. But the Lord says, do not give up for as you pray and continue to pray, it's going to break and it's going to flee. God is restoring families. He's healing marriages, bringing prodigals home and restoring joy. He is bringing a turning in households. Now get this, Courtney, where households that were once in chaos shall now be havens of peace and his presence a place for deep encounters. I'm like, I can't believe this. I literally saw houses with huge wells in the middle of their homes where prayer and where, where, sorry, where prayer had dug a well for refreshing, revival, recompense and restoration for the entire mm. household. And that was from 2016. And as you were, you were sharing just then, I felt like the Lord said, quick, go look at that word. And as I opened it, that's where it fell. And, uh, and talk about full circle, hey, like yeah. that, that we're in this place right now where the Lord is truly, um, he's fulfilling that which he has spoken. Like there is such a, as I, even as I read that, Courtney, like it is thundering in my spirit about the territory of family and the, the occupying of the, the home, um, being taken in a greater way by by God's people, like by by mothers, by fathers, like yeah, I just I feel really strongly that there's a a turning that yeah. God is bringing um, for people and for their children. In well, this it's, season. I love that you went back to that word, and then we're just going to keep on this vein, if that's okay, for a little bit because. You went back to that word, and as you were sharing, the Lord said, "Hey, look up that word that you wrote about the whirlwind of glory." And I was like, "All right, I didn't write it; He showed it." And then I wrote it down. I like to yeah. take, I just take dictation. That's really all. Awesome. I love it, <laughs> secretary. <Yeah. laughs> uh, but uh, it was we actually released it on um, Scribes of Zion, the yeah. the website that we've got. So it's on there if you want to read more about it, but there was a part that he said, go back and look at this. Mm -hmm. And as you're reading, I'm reading this over to the side. And he was talking about, <laughs> I love the way the Lord works. He's, yes. he's really also been highlighting a lot lately. Like I've been this past week, I messaged you. I'm like, man, Lord, I'm so heavy. I'm so heavy. I don't know mm -hmm. what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think it was Nate Johnson wrote up something about hope deferred. And I was like, oh my word, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Like it was disguised and I just didn't see it right away. 
-hmm. And um, so anyway, you're talking, the Lord says, go look at this, this real fast. And here it is in the whirlwind of glory word. And he says, do not accept hope deferred's promise of rest for it's only death in disguise. Yes. Do not swallow the lie of acceptance for it is only defeat in disguise as peace. For I am mm -hmm. coming and have now come to transform this destruction into a move of my glory. Mothers and fathers, yeah. release yourself from the pressures of merit and from the striving for perfection. You have not been made to carry these. Mm. Rest yourself upon my faithfulness and fasten yourself upon my authority for the place of my deep love for you. Speak, pray, release, soak, rest and laugh your laughter is a weapon wow um, and i remember i know I'm, i need to lay down for a while yeah. <laughs> this just keep happening every time I do a <laughs> podcast i but i, I just it. feel so much peace in that too in that you know mm -hmm. you see the lord in, in coming to jacob in this dream yeah I don't see Isaac anywhere near, and I don't see Abraham anywhere near, but the faithfulness of the Lord shows up in a dream to reveal himself to him because of God's faithfulness to Abraham. And in the dream, he reveals himself and he's, he's talking about, this is who I am. And I remember uh, months ago, uh, actually it may have been more like years ago, my youngest came downstairs one morning and she said, mama, I had really good dreams. And I said, oh, you did? what did you dream about? And she said, Jesus. No. And I said, really? And she said something, I think she said something about him playing a guitar and mm. singing. She said, uh, he sang, he sang him song over me. And I remember thinking like in my mind, oh, that's incorrect grammar, but the Holy Spirit said, no, it's not. Uh -huh. I was like, okay. So what's to come from that later? And then he reminded me of, is it Zechariah where it says that the Lord sings? songs yeah. of deliverance yes. over us. So he's he's like I sing myself over her in her oh. dreams and that brought me such I know I know oh. it brought me such comfort to know that like there's a gap there's always going to be a gap as a yeah. mom between mm -hmm. you and like your children and, and what they might need we can't always be everywhere and be everything all the time yeah. and we're not supposed to be and that beautiful space there, that's Jesus, this territory that he gets to come in and reveal himself in his own way to our children. And that just gave me such comfort to know, okay, he's showing up for them, even in their dreams, like, because he's faithful. Mm -hmm. I don't have to get it perfect. That's yeah. not the requirement. I'm just mm -hmm. to be, and then he does his thing. So yeah. encourage, be encouraged, mothers, mm -hmm. ladies. Oh, that's so good. I just, you know, and even hearing that, Courtney, doesn't it, it just ministers to your heart, especially yeah. in those, you know, those really intense moments where, you know, like ladies, if you're listening and you, you know, you've got some things going on with children, you're like, I don't know what to do. Or, you know, that, that feeling where as a mom, like you want to help your kid as much as you, you possibly can mm -hmm. and love them, but actually recognizing like I, I don't, I'm limited, right? Like I can't yeah. be everything to you. Um, and you said those words and you're not supposed to be. And I, just as you said that, I just felt, Courtney, <laughs> like there was some, some weights that were lifted off. Like there was just some, some real heaviness that was on shoulders that just suddenly I felt it just lifted off. Um, and this place of like, as you shared, I heard again, and I'm hearing it a lot in this season, and it speaks to me of the rest that God is bringing. But I heard that, oh, that exhale again, that place of rest, like ladies, like your children, your grandchildren, like your spiritual children, like the Lord has got them, you know, like yeah. I know that we, we can say so easily, oh, yeah, I know the Lord has my children covered. Like I've, I know like it's all good. But when things get really real and really intense, like and, and circumstances are screaming louder through your children's lives than the promise of God, like that's a really intense space. And, uh, and I really just, I, I felt that exhale, Courtney, as you were, you were sharing that the Lord's like, you know what, like where you're 
uh, ability ends, like, you know, my ability doesn't end. Like I've got them. Like one word, I can speak over them in their sleep and emotional healing takes place. Deliverance takes place. Like we can't, we, sure, we can help our children on those journeys, but we are not, we're not the healer, right? We're not the deliverer. Like the Lord uses us, absolutely. But gosh, like the, um, yeah, the encouragement and the rest I just felt then, Courtney, while you were sharing was really tangible. And I heard this scripture I opened it up here um, in Isaiah 64, verse 4, and it says, Since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for him. And I just felt this encouragement to you, ladies, like um, that as we wait like on him, like he he is faithful and he will be faithful and he, he really, what you're going to see is like he's going to work wonders for you and for your children as you wait on him, <clears throat> excuse me, as you, you really, um, you know, entwine yourself with him. Yeah. I just yeah. feel like there's hope that he's releasing this morning, Courtney. It's really and, beautiful. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I just, I'm going to share something that happened this last week kind of from the trenches. Um, experience that happened for me it's it, it can seem like oh Lana and I get on here and we're just oh yeah Robert, you know do this ladies <laughs> and, and I have told you this Lana before where I'm like I never I don't want to tell get on here or anywhere and tell people hey do this no. um if it's yes. not something I'm not willing to do um yeah myself but this last week we've started to do um just a family advent thing mm-hmm. where we make a special um special meal or a special snack mm-hmm. or something and I have kids of variety of ages um but we make it a time where we just quietly come together and we light mm-hmm. our candles and we have a snack and we sit mm-hmm. and we read and um listen to what the Lord is saying about it and um, one of my kiddos I've spoken about her before she has Mm. battled an autoimmune condition that has affected her brain. So there's times where that are more challenging than others. But one of the areas that has been challenging for her has been her communication. And um, this night in particular, I had high hopes. I had gone and planned all these things, you know, as moms, we want to you kind of, I, I wanted to at least have all of, oh, we're going to gather around. It's going to be this beautiful, holy thing. And it was, mm-hmm. um, but she decided she didn't want to join us for that. And she was not very happy with me. Um, she mm-hmm. was up in her room and I just invited her down and she was really cranky and um, she said no. And I said, okay. And I just shut the door and I prayed and I said, Jesus, I know the things that you have promised for her Mm -hmm. and for us. And that's all true. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm going to just relinquish this to you right now, Lord, Mm -hmm. because you know, you know, the desires of my heart for this. And I know the desires of your heart and what your will is. So I was like, Jesus, I'm just going to release this to you. And I trust that you're in with her, that your presence Mm -hmm. is with her and you're going to bring the things that you have said, because in those moments, I can take that, quick moment and I can Mm. become extremely discouraged. I can think, ah, this is never, you know, all all of the rabbit Mm -hmm. holes that our brains like to take us down. Um, but I remember I just prayed a quick prayer. We went downstairs and I was disappointed, like full disclosure. Mm -hmm. I was disappointed. We sat down. Um, we did our advent thing. It was still beautiful. Um, Mm. and I stepped away for a little while. Um, I actually think I was talking with you or I was doing something, and I come back out and my husband is there and he said, Ava came downstairs. And I said, oh, she did. Mm. And he said, yeah. And he said, she, in her own way, explained mm. um, in her own way that she was nervous about all mm. the talking. And he said, so I lit the candles with her. And he said, I read to her the verse and she blew the candles out, which she really likes to mm. do. And they had a moment of connecting over it and mm. where he, he shared the word with her and Anytime the word is spoken over a child, whether they comprehend it or not, there's blessing that's going forth from that. And I just felt, I just felt the Lord smile because it was like, okay, I get it touches my heart, makes me emotional because 
it's that place of trust of saying like, I don't know how this is going to look, but I know what you've said. I'm in line with you. I'll Mm -hmm. pray in the spirit till I know what to do. (laughs) And how, how kind, how faithful, Mm -hmm. how good Mm -hmm. is he to our kids? And I just, yeah, just wanted to share that. It's like a, it doesn't always look shiny, but he's in Mm -hmm. the middle. Like he doesn't care. He's in the middle of, of it all with us. So, yeah. Yeah, and those beautiful moments with him are so precious, aren't they? Like they yeah. they take the revelation of his goodness and his faithfulness and his love to a whole other level, doesn't it? Like you yeah. you can't walk away from that moment the same. Like yeah. even as yeah. when you shared it with me, like I remember just being <laughs> like, God, like, oh, you're so kind, like you're so loving. And again, like even as you share it now, like I hear that that sound of um, of encouragement but also like comfort to mothers right now, like I've got your kids, like I've got this. Like there is just a, yeah, there's this beautiful um, rest that that God is bringing. I know I keep saying it, but I keep feeling it. And, you know, it reminds me as well, Courtney, that how much more does the Lord love our children or his children oh. that he's given to us, right, than we do? Like, and and that, what a what a beautiful reminder again that, you know, he, he's working and he's moving and he's not standing on the sideline and saying, well, Courtney, I hope you, you you can work it out and work out what to do. And Lana, I hope you can work it out too. Like, you know, he's right there and he's present. Um, and again, like just this whole conversation has reminded me again just of, you know, the Lord, he's a father and, yeah. and his heart for the generations and his heart for... Um, yeah, for our descendants and his heart for like for legacy and godly legacy and all of those things. Like I just think, wow, like such a key and important conversation, especially mm-hmm. for the day that we're living in right now, right, yeah. where there's just the enemy is trying to, you know, redefine family and all of those things that the Lord's like, hey, I'm, I'm going to reveal myself yeah. again as as the father and my heart for family and my heart for home. And I just, I can't shake this, Courtney, but there's something Mm -hmm. that the Lord is releasing through this podcast today for the restoration of family. What you shared about the chaos, um, I really feel like there are ladies listening that are carrying such a heavy um, sadness and such a heavy weight and and, all, and almost a regret in some ways as well over um, what they have seen this spirit of chaos do in their household um, in the previous season. But if that's you listening, I want you to hear that word that Courtney uh, released, you know, and the, the word that I read that there is a turning, that shalom, like don't, don't underestimate the power of your decree over your home. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a there's a restoration in your and, home. And there's That's a it. yeah, you're absolutely right, Lana. And I I just really encourage you if that's you and, and you, this is really resonating with you, go back and find go back and find this word and maybe we'll find a way, Lana, where we can link it somehow to the bottom yeah. um of this mm. podcast when it comes out. Um, because I think that to read it in the entirety, um, and the one that, that you shared as well. Um, the 2016 one, uh, I think we should put both of those on there because I think that there's keys for, for mothers that are being released. Like we are in the year of Ascension. We are in the year where the Lord is putting such an emphasis on upon prayer right now. So yeah. we're going to link yeah. those some way um, so that you can read it because particularly in the, in the whirlwind word, uh, there is a lot that the Lord spoke even about, about families that he's bringing families back together, but that he's creating Mm -hmm. families. And then he spoke particularly about adoption. So I just Mm -hmm. kind of got this understanding that, that there's some people maybe that are listening that are like, uh, I yearn, I'm yearning for this. I'm yearning Mm -hmm. for this place of motherhood. And I very much felt that in this time that we are in now, the Lord's putting a special emphasis upon adoption. Um, 
but there's yes. going to be um, open wombs and there's also going to be openings, um, mm -hmm. open doors for, for people to adopt, to, to grow their family in that way as well. Um, and as, as we were speaking, I got a text message from a friend. Uh, she's a mm -hmm. speech therapist. And she said mm -hmm. to me that she sat in a session today with a little girl um, who was speaking another language. And she mm -hmm. said over and over in the session, this little girl kept saying this phrase and she asked what mm -hmm. it meant. And the little girl was saying, Jesus Christ open door over oh. and over. And she <laughs> said, her mom looked at her and said, I don't know why she keeps saying that. Wow. <laughs> this little girl is four. And it's wow. like, Lord, have your way. <laughs> like, wow. I, I don't, I don't even have anything to say about that. Just the, the weightiness on that is just incredible. Yes. So you said open door, right? Open door. Because it Jesus lagged. Christ. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Sorry. Open. Jesus Christ, open door. Wow. Okay. So the Hebraic year that we're in, <laughs> five seven eight four, is the year of the door. <laughs> I I've got that come all over me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, oh. and he is the door. Oh my goodness me. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Well, look, I I just want to say like sailor because yeah. even as we, you know, we have talked in this this episode you know about the descendants, about the father's heart, like all of the things that that we have shared like we really are in a place where god is he's inviting us higher and he's inviting us um into to ascend um and to really begin to see as he sees like even um i just felt right then like for those that are um you know you're in your season right now but you're actually feeling really swirly um i really felt like that the Lord is actually going to speak to you. Um, I know this is not the same context as this passage, but there's something about where, you know, the Lord says to Jacob here, like, this is where you are. And Jacob didn't know, right? Like you pointed yeah. that out before, didn't you, Courtney? Yeah. And I really felt like um, that to encourage you to continue to lift your eyes to him, right? It says in Psalm 121, like lift your eyes to the hills for where does your help come from, right? Your help comes from him. Well, that's my abridged version. But, you know, um, but as you lift your eyes and as you ascend in that place of worship and just keeping your eyes on him and beholding him, I feel like there's a clarity that is is happening. I saw like this heavy, um, it was like a, uh, what is it, uh, like a cloud and it just suddenly started to disintegrate and it just became nothing like it just became like this empty mist and it kind of just like blew away and I feel like that there are some of you that have felt really confused about where you are right now um, and where you are in your season and what season I'm actually in and like wh where am I actually to put my hands and like where am I actually to put my feet and what what actually is the inheritance God has for me or the territory that he has for me there's been this swirling confusion and I want to encourage you that as you lift your eyes uh, to him and you worship him and pray him that there is a clarity that God is going to bring right now for where you are in your season um, and there won't be any more questions around where do I put my hands what do I do what do things look like there's just this clarity that God is going to release to you in this season and it's 11 11 here in Sydney <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> can't make it up um, but yeah I just released that to you I just really felt like there was a real clarity that the Lord was breathing on as we're wrapping up yeah well do you have any final we, thoughts my friend i mean we packed a lot into two verses of screen yeah. <laughs> we unpacked a lot i should say and those two uh, verses there but i mean i was telling my kids the other day um you know nothing in the word is is unimportant that the mm -hmm. lord puts things in there there's details in there if he says something specifically pay attention because there's something yeah that he's saying through that. So yes. again, two, two lines of scripture can open up just yeah. deep wells and new heights. So 
Yeah. yeah. So good. Wonderful. Yeah. Such a reminder, isn't it, to not rush through verses, right? Oh, yeah, like, you know, you're lying on the very ground that I gave to your descendants. Awesome. Let's keep, like, you know, on. <laughs> just that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, how much like those little like those those treasures of just oh like reading the word and slowly and even the things that we may deem as insignificant um in the natural realm, you know, how often does the Lord uh show up in those areas and it just yeah. becomes life-changing revelation and encounter. So yes, it's beautiful. Well, lovely ladies, another episode of Zion's Company of Women podcast and such a joy to be with you lovely ladies each week it's just one of our favorite spaces uh, for us to sit with you so we hope that you have enjoyed this episode and that you have a wonderful rest of your day and we will see you next week bless you bye hello lovely ladies it's Courtney from Zion's Company of Women podcast And I want to thank you for all of your incredible support. If you've been blessed by the podcast and you'd like to see more content like this, please consider donating to support the Zion's Company of Women ministry team. Your donations make what we do here on the podcast a possibility. Just click the link in the podcast description for a variety of ways to donate, or you can donate via our webpage at zionscompanyofwomen.com. And while you're there, check out our upcoming events, as well as our brand new launch of Scribes of Zion and Zion's Company of Mothers. Thank you for all of your incredible support. And as always, God bless you.